What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods 7 to the Sky. Guys, I have been doing a little bit of stuff off camera here. One of the things that I've done off camera, you can see in the background, I have redone our wall of storage. Yeah, I try to make things a little bit, well, try to make things make a little bit more sense is what I did. So uh, I added in these compacting drawers with ores in it. Well, with a smelted resource. So iron, for instance, is in here. So we have the nuggets, the ingots, and the blocks. And right below that, we have the ore pieces, right? Yeah, so gold and copper and tin, all of the resource that, that gets turned into is right above it. We have these mostly fully upgraded, I think some of these drawers, like the uh, cobalt one, for instance, doesn't have all the upgrades in it. And then the ones at the very top up here that we're not getting a whole lot of things, uh, I didn't bother with the upgrades, but yeah, I went ahead and moved everything back a little bit. So this is what we're looking like now. We got a flex hammer turning cobblestone into gravel, filling up our drawer here. That's getting extracted over into our sieve. And that is, uh, yeah, that's just sifting it and putting that, the resource back into these drawers. So yeah, everything's about like what it was before, but it looks a lot nicer in my opinion anyway. So I'm very happy with it. Uh, one of the things though, as I was making the upgrades for that, I noticed that we were running out of wood, right? So I planted a whole bunch of oak trees and then I uh, vein mined them <laughs> and all of this. So we do have some oak, a little bit. Uh, actually, I guess we don't have as much as I thought we did. We're down to 15. Uh, I just got done looking at how to get oak logs. So I went through all of these different recipes, like mystical agriculture would be the way, but we aren't even there yet. We haven't even touched mystical agriculture yet, but I did see there was a lumber bee here. So this kind of had my attention. It was like, has a healthy obsession with wood logs, a species of bee can't breed amongst themselves. Well, how do you get it? So you breed a yellow carpenter bee with a green carpenter bee. Okay. Uh, we already have yellow carpenter bees, so I was looking at how do you get a green one. It says look up recipe for this bee to see which nest it can spawn in. Bee spawning. Looks like basically any type of wood <laughs> that it can spawn in. So once again, I planted down some birch trees, and then I spawned some birch nests. Um, well, I planted birch trees next to these flowers. I grew them up, and then it spawns birch nests. So, uh, one of those nests actually did have a green carpenter bee and I used a sturdy bee cage that we got, I think as a quest reward a while ago to contain it. Uh, we already have, let's see, bee nest, uh, birch, birch. Yeah. We already have a bunch of yellow carpenter bees in here, right? We were just missing the green one and now we have a green one. Also, another thing I noticed with these two tall flowers, if you shift next to them, it bone mills it. So you get yourself. A uh, unintentional flower farm if you use those to try and produce bees. Anyway, so we have uh, an extra bee nest that appeared there. But yeah, we have the green carpenter bee and a yellow carpenter bee. Uh, so now the next step is how do we breed them together? Let's, let's take a look one more time. We go back into here, advanced beehives, lumber bee, uh, bee breeding. So it just says any type of flower between those two. And I'm guessing this is a hundred percent chance or actually does it have to be these botania flowers? Uh, I'm seeing a lot of, oh, one of those said Minecraft. There's too many things. I'm going to assume any type of flower. So let's grab ourselves a fence post. One of those, some leads, three leads, and then some flowers. I guess those rose bushes that I was just making a whole bunch of should work. So let's do all of this stuff and see if we can get ourselves a lumber bee. So we'll place that down. I will let this guy free for the moment. Come here. You stay there. And then I don't know how long it's going to take for this bee to escape this. I guess we have to make a day. Yep. So I just slept through the night and this bee immediately popped out of the nest. There we go. So now we have a yellow carpenter and a green carpenter. And will you make it a baby? Make it a baby. Oh, check it out. It is a very tiny, a very tiny lumber bee. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to make myself one more of these. We got to wait five minutes for these guys to be able to breed again. It doesn't actually see on the tool tip it says how long this one's going to be until it becomes a big, strong adult bee. But yeah, we got to wait for these guys to cool down five minutes. You got to trade for us a portal charm and eh, not interested. 
Yep, anyway, I'll make another one of these bees and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I made a couple more of these advanced oak beehives with the oak expansion boxes on there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I got one on either side and I've connected the pipes down below. So it looks like that bee, this guy, Oh, we look at the uses of it. Yeah, so bee flowering. This is what it looks like. So it looks like whatever log that it pollinates from is probably what it's going to be making. I hope it doesn't make just some random log. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that is how this works. We're about to find out. I'm going to put an oak log down here, though. Uh, instead of having flowers at the very bottom. Yeah, we'll just have an oak log here. Like so. Mm-hmm. And then we'll grab some of these carpenter bees or lumber bees. Uh, I don't know the best way to get these out of here. So what I've been doing is using a mob imprisonment tool, moving far away. So the lead pops off and then I'm going to grab these things to pick them up with. Now, the reason why you go far away with that, if you don't, if you only go a few blocks away and then you drop them, like they're still attached to the lead and they'll get flung back. <laughs> it's kind of funny little rubber band effect. So yeah, if you go kind of far away, and you do that, the lead will break immediately, and then you can pick the lead up and then put them into whatever other container you want. Otherwise, you lose your lead. Okay, so there's that and this. So we got three of these, and we can make a couple more if we want to. Uh, I think we should be about ready to go here. Oh, you know what? I am missing the piece of glass to contain them. So let me grab a clear glass. Yeah, I was just experimenting a little bit more with the mob duplicator, trying to see if we could duplicate that B, and I was unable to. I was using our uh, liquid XP that we have over here as a fluid. This didn't work, or I'm sorry, this fluid XP. That didn't work, and then I even made a crusher, mob crusher. Oh, it's, is it in my inventory? I'm not sure what happened to the mob crusher. Maybe it got picked up by... It's right here. Yeah, okay, so I made the mob crusher and I tried putting in essence into this thing. I, I feel like we might have done this before, like maybe I converted the fluid XP into essence somehow. But anyway, I still was not able to duplicate a B using the mob duplicator, which is a little unfortunate. But yeah, we got our clear glass now that we can cap these off. Let's put these carpenter bees in here and see if they, or I'm sorry, lumber bees in here and see if they just work. No, don't go away. Where are you going? <laughs> okay, he's like bounce out. He's like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to go back in there. Okay, we got another one in there. Um, Go, go down the hole. Okay, he kind of knows where he needs to be. Let me help him out here. Kind of knows where he needs to be, but let me help him out. Why? Stay down in there. No. Guys, this bee is being a jerk. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. I'm going to do this, this. Oh, I didn't catch it in time. Hmm. How do I do this? Maybe if I come in here, I place the glass. And then I place the bee. Okay. Uh, there's gotta be a better way to do this for sure. I wish I could just place them directly into the bee. You can't do that with these, can you? I'm trying to right click it in here. It's not, it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, so this bee should be getting the pollen from the log and then it should find its home in here. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so I'll have to, oh, I guess I should do that one more time. Uh, what do I do with the glass? Glass, this, this bee. We'll place this one down here. It shouldn't fly away. It can't go anywhere. It'll just grab the pollen from the log and then go in there. And then I'll make my great escape when this is all done. Okay, guys. Well, I ended up making five of these lumber bees in total. And I am automatically filling in some glass bottles here and all of these. So we don't have to really keep an eye on that anymore, which is great. As long as we have glass bottles available. So yeah, we uh, ran some applied energistics over here. And I have a ME interface that's providing some glass bottles, right? So every time uh, the bees make a honey bottle, this goes down by one and that'll automatically refill it using these pipes here. And then we have a ME pattern provider directly next to that. This is just accepting all the items the bee makes 
back into our applied energistic system. Yeah, so just a very, very simple process here. The bees are exporting their items directly into that pattern provider there. And this interface is just for the glass bottles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just ran a ME cable uh, over here, just like so, not a big deal. And uh, so the grand total that these bees have been making <laughs> are just these oak log chips. Now, I don't understand why they make the oak log chips. If we go to uses and we see uh, the advanced beehive, it clearly shows that these things are making dark oak wood 1 to 7, dark oak chips 1 to 7, dark oak log 1 to 7. The only thing I'm getting, well, I mean, those are the dark oak, is the same thing if we go over to, like, the oak section. But anyway, the only thing that we are collecting right now is just the oak log chips, and I don't know how to get the logs out of it. If they're just producing these log chips, that's not very good, because you need nine of those to turn into a log right so like they are producing wood but it's not at any <laughs> rate that i would prefer that they would be making um so yeah anyway i put up a barrel over here and we can put those in there unfortunately that doesn't have a display for some reason just doesn't show up uh but yeah all of the oak log chips end up here in this barrel uh or this drawer i guess i need to put in some upgrades I was gonna make some upgrades. We were out of wood, so I couldn't make the upgrades. So I grew some more trees. That's why we have a bunch of oak now. So copper upgrade. Let's go ahead and make four of those, and we'll throw them in there. Although I don't really see our bees producing that much with just five bees ever, but we'll see. I'll probably end up having to make a uh, better type of tree farm, or maybe we'll just do mystical agriculture by the time we get around to it. But either way, our uh, wood issue has been solved for now. So I just got done making some netherrack and crushing it using our mechanism crusher over there. Now I am sifting this stuff so we can get ourselves some more netherite scrap. That's right. I would like to upgrade our, our mesh here to a netherite mesh. That way when we sift our crushed netherrack, we actually get a pretty decent amount of the netherite scrap coming through and that's the last of nine stacks somehow we ended up with 17 pieces though i'm not quite sure how that happened this chest underneath was completely full because i forgot to set the export when i moved things around um yeah so that crusher is sitting on top of this chest this pipe is supposed to be extracting into this interface and for whatever reason this pipe was not extracting even though it looks like it was in the extract mode. So anyway, I re-put it into the extract mode and then I put a advanced pipe upgrade in there and when I did that it cleared out all of the stuff that was in the chest plus the stuff that the sifter or the, yeah, I guess the sifter, not the crusher, was sifting and we ended up with 17 netherite scrap. I'm not sure if there was some kind of bug where like it was backing up internally in here and giving us a higher percent or what, but either way, we ended up with a bunch of it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna complain. So in order for us to make the upgraded mesh here, if we look at the, the uses on this, we need one netherite ingot. And in order to get that, we need four scrap plus four gold to make that. So that is pretty easy for us to do at this point. So let's go make ourselves a netherite ingot. So we want uh, gold. Right? Yep. So, whoop, no, gold. Gold and netherite scrap, and boom. We got ourselves a netherite ingot. So, now that we have that, we need. Stop. Stop that. <laughs> now that we have that, we need to get ourselves a smithing table, right? And then a mesh. We should have a bunch of these. Yep. So, we got this. We'll place that down. That, that, boom. Netherite mesh. Awesome. Quest completed the final mesh very good so that netherite mesh as we've seen before if we sift crushed netherrack on it will actually give us a five percent chance plus the 0 0.4 and 0 0.8 percent chance that the emerald mesh and i think the diamond mesh were giving us but yeah it's important that we get that five percent chance as well that's going to significantly increase the amount of netherite that we get netherite scrap when we sift this stuff so yeah very good um in fact i just put nine stacks through there how much more redstone do we have not a crazy amount not a crazy amount actually 
I might need to go back to the Twilight Forest and go get some more redstone out of the hollow hill there. That's how I was getting all this stuff. And then down here below, I did set up our barrel so we can just throw the redstone into here. It's gonna get converted with the lava and nether rack ends up down there. And we are using a decent amount of our lava as we do this. It is one bucket for every piece of nether rack, but we have 15,000 reserve. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go see if I can get some more redstone from the twilight forest and we'll be back i'm not even sure what it is that i'm fighting here this thing is this like one of the ghosts from the twilight forest it's like phasing through blocks what is its face even i don't know is it reflecting my arrows am i doing damage to it why is there music playing as well what the heck can i see you where's your hitbox Okay, you're doing some damage, not a whole lot. So I am doing like one HP of damage to this thing. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not sure what that thing even is, <laughs> but I'm not doing much damage to it. So we're gonna go. All right, so I'm back from the twilight. We have quite a bit of redstone. We have 2.9 thousand redstone dust, only 35 <laughs> compress redstone blocks, but yeah, 2.9 thousand. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think that hollow hill where we enter into the twilight forest is basically out of redstone now. So if I need more than this, I'm going to have to find another source from it. Uh, so we have 13 netherite scrap and I have an inventory mostly full of crushed netherrack. I kind of wanted to see with that 5%, if we put that in there, like how fast do we get nether or the, yeah, the netherite scrap, how fast do we get that? Do we get it fast at all? Is it gonna be slow? It's gotta be way better than what we were getting before. That just said 13, now it says 29. Right? I'm not mistaken, am I? Uh, okay, why are we getting so much of it so quickly? I don't know. Maybe like when it gets at 5%, it like gives us all the amount that it processes at once. I'm not actually sure how that all works. Um, but yeah, we went from 13 to 29, so I am pretty pleased with that. I would say that is really good. Uh, I do have more netherrack crushing over here, and I have, uh, I think all the redstone that I've made downstairs in my inventory now, so I'll just finish, uh, crushing all of this and sifting it all, and then we'll be back, guys. Yeah, so for sure, this is going up by 16 every time. If we get another one, it'll be at 109 here. Uh, but it seems like when it procs and we get the netherite from this, it gives us 16 at a time. Are we going to get lucky and see one more go up here? Probably not. We only got one more here. Well, okay. Yeah, I was definitely watching that go up by 16 every single time that we got a netherite at all. So that's kind of interesting that it does that. I wonder if that's what these upgrades do. If it just like, mm, well, maybe it's not the upgrade specifically. It's just a sieve. If you get like a piece of iron, you get 16 of them. If you get a piece of netherite, you get 16 of them. It's kind of interesting. I wasn't really expecting that with uh, this particular thing, but you know what? It's fine. We now have 93 netherite scraps. So we can use this for all of our netherite needs going forward. So last episode, we had mentioned that we were running low on getting silicon, right? For applied energistics. And I wanted to find a better way to get silicon. Silicon. So we saw that there you can smelt the quartz dust. You can smelt the certus quartz dust to get it. And there's a whole bunch of different things that are involving that. There's even bees that will produce it with a silicon comb. If you wanted to go this route, uh, you do need a silicon bee, which is a nomad bee and a reed bee. I think both of those are like base bees. So they shouldn't be like super difficult. Maybe this one would be, I don't know. Anyway, uh, they shouldn't be super difficult, but there's the material stonework factory here where you can just generate cobblestone, grind it, grind it, grind it, and then you turn it into silicon. I'm not entirely sure how that all works, but we're gonna go with it. So we need another material stonework factory is basically what that boils down to. So let's go ahead and make another one. And this does require us to have the advanced machine frame, which does require that netherite scrap. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to make more of that today. Uh, so yeah, we need to set up this dissolution chamber and uh, Hmm, I don't know. It almost feels like maybe I should set up one of these things permanently to always be able to make this and then automate that But I don't know where I would even put this machine 
to do that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're gonna need some gold. We're gonna need some netherite. We're gonna need a diamond gear, I think, was part of this recipe. Yeah, material stonework. So the diamond gear is part of the recipe. What else is it? We need plastic. And then the machine frame. We need a simple machine frame. Okay, and then we need the uh, the pink slime. And of course, the dissolution chamber itself. I don't know where this is going to go permanently. So again, we're just going to set this somewhere. Uh, and the tank is the green slot. We'll put this on top. We'll tell the green slot to insert the pole. There we go, pink slime up in there. All right, so now it should just be gold, gold, scrap, scrap. I, I don't think these have to be in the specific order that it shows on the recipe, but I think that's all we have to do. Okay, so we're making that. I'll go ahead and get the rest of this together. I think we have, oh yeah, it's just a glass pane plus pink slime to make that ball. So yeah, I'll go ahead and make that. And there's nothing else here too crazy. We'll be right back. Okay, so the other stonework factory has been made and we have this set up. So it's crushing, crushing, crushing nothing. Right, so the uh, the final inventory here, I guess, is the one that's being extracted. The third inventory, we have these other ones set to block. Nothing else should be able to escape out of there. So yeah, the silicon is being made and it goes right to there. So we're extracting out the bottom. This one, we're extracting the stone out of the side, and those are all going to the back of this storage controller. Now, thinking about this, since we are using these drawers to store the items, right? We're using these drawers and they are connected to applied energistics. These stonework factories could literally be anywhere else. And just as long as they're dumping their contents into our applied energistic system, they'll make it back into these drawers just the same. The only thing is like the stone that we're making here, this one in particular, yeah, we have kind of a hard limit on how many that we're making at 16.4 thousand. And I don't have a void upgrade on here. So if we make any more and we're dumping that somewhere into our applied energistics, it's just going to fill up our digital storage. So that's why I decided to leave this one here connected. And since that one was already connected, I just decided to place this one here. Uh, but yeah, this guy could be literally anywhere else uh, just making those items. <laughs> and then we could just put void upgrades on here in case we exceed capacity. But there we go. We are now automatically creating a silicon and I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. So that's just going to keep clocking up over time. Looks like we have made 802 of the oak log chips. That's not bad at all. Those bees are definitely putting in work when we need that oak wood. We'll have that available to us. I don't know how fast we're going to need it, but if we need a lot of wood, we'll definitely have to figure out another method of collecting that stuff. But yeah, all in all, I think we're doing pretty good here as far as these automations go. Guys, we're going to go and wrap it up here for today. Yeah, we got some stuff going on. Uh, we still need to get more resources coming in automatically. That's probably going to end up being mystical agriculture when we get there at some point in the future. I had to use a little latex here to make those upgrades for the material stonework factory. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.